What a fascinating book. Oh, hello, I didn't see you there. Most of you are probably thinking right now, who are you again? Oh, the firebombing guy. He's still alive? What an anti-climax. Yep, missed you too. I'm uh, not very good at the YouTube lingo, but you're probably wondering why it's quote, been a while and God, I wish I could tell you. However, for a long, long list of reasons, I can't tell you anything. What a cruel twist of irony that is. I would die for the amount of clicks I could get if I went through it all. But seeing as it wouldn't just be me dying, you realize, mm, let's just leave that a fig speech for now. So if you're not happy about not knowing, can you just imagine how unhappy I am not telling? I feel like the girl at the end of Spirited Away, she has this mad whimsical adventure and meets all these river spirits and some bobbleheads. And then at the end, when the parents are asking, where have you been? It's a long story. And that's it. Sorry. I think we just crossed the line saying what I just said then. That's all we got to show for the last four fucking months. And I didn't even get to go on a vacation. I wanted to go to Fiji or something, but no, we just sat around in this content cryo tube watching stuff that I should be covering just fly right by. No, I wanted to cover State Street tax cards. Not really, but... Mm. Okay, not entirely accurate. While we were away, we did keep working. We were putting out weekly videos on our Patreon, and most of those videos will still be coming out shortly, but I just have to say, thank you so much to the Patreon members. They literally kept these pieces afloat during that time. Obviously, it has not been pretty, and we do need to rebuild, but without putting out anything publicly for nearly half a year, the wheels absolutely would have fallen off this endeavor entirely without Patreon. In fact, they would have fallen off in the first month, because as you can imagine, the profits in this endeavor are razor thin for the shit that we have to put up with. And if those wheels did fall off, that is goodbye to the public service that has become this channel. You can't just flip the lights off and start up again so what i'm saying is even though we can never tell you why fuck we deserve a pay raise like i always say if you treat our channel like a newspaper pay us like one just a couple of bucks like you would to the sun herald and if you already are on our patreon i know a lot of people say this is a cliche but Honestly, we cannot do this without you, so thank you so much. Anyway, the two things that I can say for now, and I don't think that I'm overstepping the line by saying it is, I know who did it, and I feel safe enough to come back and start posting here for now. So, now I'm back with the content that I know international viewers really want. A hyper-specific, small-scale New South Wales politics story. Stick around if you want to hear about the minutiae of union elections in New South Wales. Hey, someone has to keep the bastards on us. It's good to be back! Look, I really am sorry about this. I know that you don't want to hear about this, but then again... When did you want to hear about anything that we've ever posted? It's time to once again throw away yet another massive opportunity for international growth by maybe making tiny changes to things even I think, fuck, this is getting way too local. Anyway, union elections are taking place right now for the Fire Brigade Employees Union. Oh, why is Mr. Beast bigger than us? This video is about that. Voting is open and the first thing that I need to say is whoever wins, it's still going to be a fine union. The very fact that all the candidates are in their union demonstrates that, but let's just say that I think a certain ticket is a little more effective than another. The incumbent Secretary Leighton Drury secured Fireys the highest pay rise in a decade, whilst the last time the other faction's ticket were in power, they got the Fireys stuck in the Liberals' pay cap, even though the cops could secure a pay rise during this same time period. In fact, one of the only achievements that the former secretary, Jim Casey, could point to is adopting affirmative action policies. See, this is why we had to come back. Where's Sky News on this story, eh? Come on, turning fire men into fire cups. That's the record he's running on and could win. Jim Casey is running against Drury on what he would like to sell as a more radical militant ticket, ready to fight tooth and nail for the workers' revolution, but really, as is usually the case, Casey's ticket is really into this communist LARP, which honestly, I'm not opposed to because it's communist. I'm opposed to it because it's a LARP done by people who prove time and time again to be completely impotent, and worse than that, inevitably sell out their ideals as soon as they get a half decent offer. If they achieved what they promised, I'd endorse them, but they don't. And there's nothing radical about getting nothing done but screaming, uh, not good enough, at people who actually do get things done. Actually, sorry, that is pretty radical, but it's not intimidating. You got the regular screecher types crying about Jim Casey in 2000 at IT because he smashed a pinata of Scott Morrison trying to make some point about civility. I'm not. 
That should not offend you because it's violent. It should peeve you though, because it's a perfect encapsulation of the impotent image obsessed perpetual protest mindset that infects this section of politics. It's pure pantomime. Now, if Casey went and clubbed Scott Morrison in real life, I wouldn't condone it, but I'd respect him a hell of a lot more because at least he wouldn't be faking it for once. It wouldn't be like how he ran in the union last time. Government friendly, impotent virtue signaling. This time it'd be like the constituency he purports to represent. Men of action. But this is just the tale of our times. There are certain people in politics that take the plain politics of getting a pay rise and turn it into something something 1917 Russian Revolution, only this time, yeah! It's like, shut up. No one wants to hear about something a hundred years ago. They do, on the other hand, want to hear about something that happened 700 years ago. Fuck, I am glad I can finally advertise my new show, which is all about the Byzantines. Newcastle and Perth, you're up next. Get your tickets so you can be cultured for once. But really think about it. Would you be afraid of some cosplayer with a big ornate sword swinging it about camply? Would you be more afraid of some matter of fact guy with a box cutter? Layton's your guy with a box cutter, so we'll call his ticket, very creatively, the box cutter ticket. And Jim Casey's ticket we'll call the katana ticket. Just because the katana ticket presents itself as a more radical grassroots militant option calling themselves comrades and others socialist elders, it doesn't mean they are. If you fell for that rhetoric, you'd probably think this is a guy that is a skilled samurai. Listen to this leaked 2018 email that I've obtained. It's from Chris Reed, a former secretary aligned with Jim Casey, to Casey and former president Darren Sutherland. I've continued to think about this, prompted in no small part by my increasing horror at Leighton's leadership, or lack thereof. He has few ideas of his own, hence all of these audits he's commissioning, and he provides zero direction to the staff, to the SCOM, State Committee of Management, or the membership at large. The SCOM is consequently clueless and out of control, and in the absence of knowing what to involve themselves in or any idea about the hard political slash industrial questions they should be answering, the officials are instead dabbling in petty administrative issues that should really be left well alone. I had an alarming conversation, well, an argument really, with him on Friday about SCOM's plans to overhaul the donations policy and register and put it to the members to ask them who they thought we should be donating to and how much. When I asked him why they weren't focusing on important issues or at least deciding this themselves rather than flicking it to the members, he responded with, it's the members money. Why shouldn't they decide how it's spent? I went bonkers at him, explaining that this was a classic populist right-wing response, like citizen-initiated referendums. I said we'd end up donating to One Nation and misogynist men's groups. Look at it, it's a fucking Reddit post. I also told him that I had no interest in seeing the FBEU represent the majority membership view on just about anything, that it never has, and that his role as state secretary is not to ask the members what they want, but to tell them, in short, LEADERSHIP! That's always the ones that scream Nazi the most, isn't it? The key problem that the Katana faction has is that Leighton dared allow the unwashed masses to have control over their own money. Sorry, but isn't that the point of a union? To give power to the masses? I mean, if you're gonna LARP the LARP, can you at least walk the walk? If the rank and file want to give their money to One Nation, sick, that would trigger the Katana boys. But also, shut up, that's democracy. And this same person, Jim, sought out advice informing his awards policy that he's taken to this election. Guess what? After leaving the union, where he went to work in a position almost the complete opposite to his former job as a union secretary, in that he worked for the Employer Fire Rescue New South Wales and leaked internal documents appear to indicate that he worked for the commissioner as well. Militant socialist elder, until a better offer presents itself. Maybe all the fuss about the rank and file choosing where the union money is spent was actually about Chris Reed not having more of their money to spend on his private legal fees. Yeah, these leaked invoices indicate that the national union, which got taken over by the same Katana faction, paid over $4,500 to Chris Reed's lawyers. A anyway, I could go into this a lot more, all the weird social issues the Katana faction is fixated on, how the person making their campaign material apparently is a former spokesperson for polyamory action committee. But do you think the anti-popular social elder polyamory action committee and just about every other virtue signal buzzword allied with Jim Casey ticket will be as effective as the current FBEU leadership who are solely focused on achieving better conditions for members? 
At the moment, Leighton's pushing the New South Wales government hard, trying to secure a 20% pay increase for fireys. I'm going to hop on that campaign very soon, because the way the FPEU protests is hilarious, frankly. I mean, look at this, blaring sirens when Parliament's trying to sit. Anyway, glad to be back. Thank you, firefighters. I know that no one was expecting this to be the comeback video. And once again, I am sorry that we can't go into any details whatsoever about us coming back. But even though we can't, I'd just like to take this opportunity to say, while an abnormal amount of people are watching, join your union. Vote in your union elections. As you can see, the smaller they get, the easier it is for them to get co-opted by wackos, which is not just terrible for your industry, but democracy in general. Your union ticket, I think, in my opinion, is your real citizenship card. Come see my new show, Newcastle and Perth, you're up next. We've got some bigger vids coming soon too about whistleblowers, and finally, I've got more fun videos planned, such as those damn American beers that have been sitting in my fridge for six months. I'm gonna drink them, damn it. I've earned it. <laughs>